Okay, if you remember then we were talking about uh, how Tom Stoppard uh, was actually uh, Czechoslovakian by birth okay, and he would always go back for inspiration um, to uh, the playwrights and play, uh, play, plays of uh, uh, that were taking place in the Eastern Europe. Now, um, having recently finished Dog's Hamlet, what is the uh, key theme of it? What is the key, th key theme of the language? Is a, a la language is arbitrary. Okay, it also talks a lot about Shakespeare. Okay, whether it's a, whether Shakespeare Shakespeare has been reduced to a cliche or to a parody by his own countrymen, where you know they just take the melodramatic aspects from all Shakespearean plays, and uh, uh, you know uh, thereby just. Uh, Mm, expurgating the poetic and the philosophical part of Shakespeare. Okay, that's also one key themes which he doesn't really gloss over, but it's uh, there uh, is present uh, as a subtext. Sub text. Now uh, coming to um, Cahoots Macbeth. Now both plays are separated. The titles of the two plays are separated uh, with a comma. If you pay attention to that, Dog's Hamlet, Cahoots Macbeth. So, dog's Hamlet in dog language, Hamlet in dog's language, Cahoots Macbeth, who is Cahoot? Okay, that is what we are going to see. Now, the backdrop is that uh, Czechoslovakia during the 60s was uh, and uh, also during the 70s was uh, under a very aggressive uh, military and communist regime and uh, uh, it slowly became that bad that uh, much of the freedom of expression was curtailed. There was severe censorship on the media as well as on our all artistic forms including drama. Okay. So, play, uh, you are, are you familiar with any well known um, uh, you know Eastern Europe, East European writer, novelist who has been in exile or something from his own country. Orhan Pamuk from Turkey. Anyone else? Earlier? Yes, there have been plenty of movies about. Yeah. Uh, uh, the yeah. The lives of others. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The German movie. The lives of, lives of others, yes. What about uh, some one famous Russian novelist, Saul Zenison, Alexander Saul Zenison, okay, who lived in exile, Cancer Ward, and several such you know uh, novels. So he too, um, uh, you know, has uh, suffered that uh, fate. Now these the two play, uh, playwrights that. Uh, uh, Tom Stoppard focuses on in Cahoots Macbeth, Pavel Landowski and one Cahoot. Okay, they were playwrights and actors, real people in actual situation who had, who were banned by the communist regime. So, um, they were uh, prohibited from writing as well as acting in public. Now, actors and uh, uh, artists being what they are, so they worked out uh, you know a strategy to work around the situation and this led to something called LRT. In other words or in, an, in its expanded form, it is called living room theatre, living room theatre theater in people's drawing rooms. Okay. So, if they, if they were not being given a space to perform, a, a, a proper place, a space to perform, a stage or um, you know a university, something like that, where they would usually perform, then fine, they are, they are banned. So, they started performing in one another's drawing rooms, okay, where there was some space and where some like minded people could be invited and then they would enact the play and uh, things would go on. But at least they were able to 
uh, you know be faithful to their art one and also communicate a certain me message to uh, the communist regime that fine you are not allowing us to perform in public, but we still have some place to go. Okay. So, these living rooms soon became extremely famous and theatre uh, enthusiasts and actors and playwrights they started forming these groups where plays would be staged uh, you know uh, periodically and people would be invited and the audience had to pay only a nominal fee because see money was not the criteria it was just uh, a way to give a vent to their artistic self okay so that was the entire idea so kahoot's macbeth now you look at this name kahoot kahoot was one of the uh, band playwrights and uh, how kahoot started the playwright kahoot um, uh, enacted a version of Macbeth. So, that is what we mean by or that is what we understand by Cahoots Macbeth, that is the backdrop. Any question, anything you would like to comment on? So, they would you know interestingly they would send out brochures that we are going to play uh, such and such play uh, you know uh, act such and such a play today in so and so's um, flat and the byline would be that uh, Macbeth comes to the Prague flats. Was the also or yes, it was, so it was that is the idea. So, that is that uh, those elements and those features are also present in this play. Okay. So, as you read on you will find that as um, Macbeth is being performed in a living room, okay, then they suddenly uh, uh, there, there, there it is stopped, it is intervened by uh, the surveillance team, the police they come in and they burst in and they started search, they start searching the audience questioning the host. So, these things, but the, those playwrights learned to live with it, the audiences also learned to live with it and they survived many of them you know and after once it was all over then life became um, and went back to normal. For example, look at the Czechoslovakian uh, playwright who was also one of the band people Vaclav Havel okay. and he la later went on to become the president of. So, I think earlier also we talked about Tom Stoppard's relationship with Vaclav Havel okay, president of Czechoslovakia who was also a playwright and he, who also was also banned at one point. Okay, same can be said about uh, Lex Wallisa, uh, the Polish Prime Minister or President and uh, uh, who was uh, who was an actor. So, um, there could be some relationship between politics and theatre and cinema, <laughs> I do not know. So, many of these uh, uh, radical so called radical playwrights from the western world, uh, they, ha they always had their sympathies towards these prosecuted banned uh, artists and writers and playwrights and novelists from the east European part of the world. Okay. There has always been some kind of an interaction, some kind of intersection. For example, you, if you remember Harold Pinter. Harold Pinter did a lot of uh, work for uh, um, uh, the band artists and playwrights uh, from Turkey. Okay. Likewise, Arthur Miller too, he was, all, uh, he was the president of Penn. You remember Penn? Did we talk about it? What does this stand for? So, as the president of Penn, Arthur Miller had a voice where he could communicate the uh, persecution of these banned writers to uh, the world, especially to the UN and all. So, PEN stands uh, for Poets, Playwrights, Essays, Novelists. Okay. So, this, they, this is an organization, quite a reputed one and Miller was the president and then Tom Stoppard too. So, there has always been an affinity between uh, those uh, band playwrights and uh, novelists, artists etcetera 
and between the radical uh, people who are more uh, radical and Okay, uh, so we are on page 148, sorry 147, translation from dog language into, uh, oh sorry, this is not what, yeah, yeah. okay. We are on page 179, um, the action takes place in the living room of a flat, thunder and lightning, three witches in minimal light. Now observe that while uh, dogs hamlet began much later, okay. uh, Tom Stopper takes great care to establish the backdrop, yeah, that this is a school play going on, they are talking in different, uh, absolutely uh, you know out of this outrageous kind of a language which we cannot understand and he gives translation and then we are introduced to uh, the character of Easy, who is the only person who speaks normal regular English. However, and then the play starts. Hamlet begins once uh, all these things are established, that we are looking at something, some very radical aspect of language here, some very arbitrary aspect of language here. But once that is established, only then we have the actual play. And play to in what way we, we get a very truncated version of uh, Hamlet. And once that is over, there is an encore, because people loved it in spite of not knowing the language, but they loved it nevertheless because there is so much of melodrama happening, people killing, poisoning, stabbing one another. So, people are, thr the audience is thrilled. However, uh, and uh, after immediately after that they ask for an encore. And then the beauty of uh, Stoppard and perhaps the magic of Shakespeare is at work again. We have uh, the complete Hamlet reduced to just 78 lines in the encore part. Now, how is it possible? Even if you are an expert, Tom Stoppard is drawing attention to himself that look, it can be done and I am the one who can do it. Yeah, I can reduce Hamlet to 78 lines and he does it. Now, here uh, on the other hand, we are just brought uh, in the thick of the things. We are not introduced to anything at all. We do not know what are, what is a flat, what is living room theater, no explanation, nothing. We uh, cahoots Macbeth and we are introduced to Macbeth. So, uh, Macbeth, how many of you have some knowledge of Macbeth? Can you talk about that? Yes. Okay, but yeah. not the story, the story, yeah. King Duncan. King Duncan. Yes. Um, uh, let me try. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Macbeth is uh, um, one of uh, the brave generals. Okay. It's a Scottish play, set in Scotland, and um, we are told that uh, Macbeth, along with another brave general, Banquo, okay, they are out there. Uh, in a battlefield and uh, uh, they have won and there has been a rebellious general who wants to overthrow King Duncan of Scotland who is very old, but very wise and extremely um, uh, well loved king of, uh, of his people. Now, Macbeth and Banquo are quite loyal to the king and uh, having overthrown the rebellious uh, treacherous general, they are returning and as they return, they lose uh, somehow they, uh, they get lost. In the, in the forest and in the middle of the forest, they see three apparitions, three witches, three witches of, of Hamlet, uh, sorry Macbeth, it is a very famous, you know, three group of three women, three witches of uh, Macbeth. So, um, they encounter them and uh, the witches start uh, uh, prophesizing and they say that, you know, soon you are going to be, uh, you know, uh, placed in a higher position and Banco too will be given a reward by the king. 
and uh, having said that they also say something which uh, um, uh, triggers off some kind of a latent ambition already existing in Macbeth that Macbeth is going to become the king of Scotland soon and Banquo's successors would become king, but not Banquo himself. So, after that the um, witches disappear, but uh, um, Macbeth is filled with ambition and uh, uh, spurred on by his lady, Lady Macbeth. Uh, he plans to assassinate King Duncan and it so happens by coincidence that King Duncan arrives as a guest in Macbeth's palace and where um, you know seizing the opportunity Macbeth murders King Duncan in his sleep. Uh, all the while he is encouraged, uh, aggressively <laughs> encouraged by his wife and um, uh, uh, Macbeth ends up becoming the king of Scotland. Okay. And therefore, this over, you know, this over ambitious trait of Macbeth that leads to his subsequent downfall, because now he starts uh, uh, you know uh, suspecting everyone. He, he thinks that what he has done to the king could be done to him as well. So, he starts killing off you know uh, mur recklessly started starts murdering around people like first he starts with Banco. Okay. Then there is another loyal general uh, loyal to King Duncan Macduff and he kills Macduff's um, wife and children while Macduff is away. Okay. So, he is on a killing spree and goes absolutely mad with ambition. At the end he is uh, killed by Macduff and uh, the kingdom is taken over by the rightful heir. So, that is the story of Macbeth in um, its abridged form. If you remember, we also did uh, uh, Kurusawa's The Throne of Blood, which deals with the same year, which is, which is actually Macbeth, but set in 12th century medieval Japan. Okay. And uh, what, um, uh, although in uh, uh, Shakespeare, everything is uh, uh, nicely resolved at the end, because Macbeth, uh, uh, although he is a hero, he is a tragic hero, you know what a tragic hero is all about. So, but he is uh, uh, at the, by the end of the play, he has turned into an extremely repulsive, um, madly ambitious kind of a person, who has to be elimin eliminated. Okay. So, his death is not as tragic for us as Hamlet's death, who is an innocent. His death is not as tragic to us as perhaps Romeo's death. Hmm? But uh, when he is uh, uh, eventually killed and uh, uh, the rightful heir takes over the throne, we there is some kind of a relief. In Kurosawa, we do not get that relief. We um, the hero is just killed, okay, but we do not know whether this cycle of treachery is going to continue or not. So, it is quite an open ended kind of an ending in Kurosawa, because he was also making a commentary on uh, the politics in Japan. All right. So, let us have the three witches. When shall we three meet again, in thunder, lightning or in rain? When the hurly burly is done, when the battle is lost and won. That will be ear the set of sun. Where the gates? <laughs> Upon the heat. There to meet with Mac Macbeth. Fair is foul and foul is fair. Who will through the fog and fill the air? A drum, a drum, Macbeth doth come. Um, enter Macbeth and Banco. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. Now see the way he is repeating uh, the language of the witches. So perhaps that's Shakespeare's way of telling us that he is already, already, you know, um, akin to these evil spirits. How far is it called to force? What are these so withered and so wild in their attire that look not like the inhabitants of the earth and yet are on it? S speak if you can. What are you? The witches encircle Macbethy, casting a spell. You you remember Faust? We did Faust as well. So knocking at the door three times. Yeah, you have to say it three times and then I lent. That is also part of you know witchcraft. Like we have done Girish Karnats Nagamandal, where there is what is that uh, Akshya? What roots? Okay, yes. So all part of casting a spell and uh, practicing magic and witchcraft. So they encircle Macbeth and not Banco. So 
So, my, you know, pay attention to that. Yes. All hail Macbeth, hail the pain of Cordor. All hail Macbeth, that shall be king hereafter. Speak to the me who in neither bed nor fear your favours nor your hate. So shall get kings, though though be none. So all hail Macbeth and Banco. Banco and Macbeth, all hail. Stay, you imperfect speakers, tell me more. Whither are they vanished? Lights up to reveal living room. Into the air, would they had stayed? Were such things here as we do speak about, or have we eaten on the insane route that takes the reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings, you shall be king, and Thane of Corder too, went it not so? To the self same tune and words. Enter Ross. Who is there? The king hath happily received Macbeth, the news of thy success. I am sent to give thee from our royal master thanks and for an earnest of a greater honour. He bade me from him call thee Thane of Corder. What? Can the devil speak true? So, immediately the prophecy, one of the prophecies has come true. You are now uh, the Thane of Corder. So, there has been uh, a promotion of sorts. The Thane of Corder lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane lives uh, uh, yet, but treason capital confessed and proved have overthrown him. Ross hands Macbeth a chain and seal which were Corders. Glamis and Thane of Corder, the greatest is behind, two truths are told as happy prologues uh, to the swelling act of the imperial theme. I thank you gentlemen, my worthy Corder, exit Ross and Banco, stars hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. Exit Macbeth, drums. Enter Lady Macbeth, reading a letter. Rehan, could you please read for Lady Macbeth? Whilst I stood wrapped in the wonder of it, came missives from the king who all hailed me, Thane of God, by which title before, these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time with hail king tha king that shalt be this have i thought good to deliver thee my dearest partner of greatness that thou mightest not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness is promised thee late to thy heart and farewell glamis thou art and cordon and shalt be what thou art promised yet do i fear Thy nature, it is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Hide thee, hide thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear, and chastise with the valour of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid doth, doth seem to have thee crowned within. Enter first messenger. Uh, what is your tidings? The king comes here tonight. Thou art mad to saint. Is not thy master with him? Our thane is coming. One of my fellows had the speed of him. He brings great news. Now see, um, Lady Macbeth, she is reading and one of the uh, most popular lines from Macbeth is, uh, your, yet do I fear thy nature is too full of the milk of human kindness. Uh, we often use it, it is such a popular expression that it has come to be a part of a popular English language, is not it. So, uh, you are full of milk of human kindness, what does it mean? You are extremely kind. Does she know her husband well? Uh, we are not too sure, okay, because she is reading uh, a letter from her husband that uh, two of the prophecies have come out to be true. Perhaps, and he, uh, the witches also prophesied that one day I will become the king of Dun uh, king of uh, uh, Scotland. And uh, Lady Macbeth is uh, filled with ambition, and she says the only thing that can come between you and the crown is your soft nature. You are too kind, and we. I have to. I have um, that. I may pour my spirits in thine ear. It's almost like my venom in your ears, uh, my venomous words in your ear. And if you remember. Uh, the throne of blood. Perhaps you may recall the way uh, the lady um, Asaji, 
you know the the lady macbeth the character she uh, puts you know she uh, challenges his masculinity she challenges uh, the you know the so called lack of ambition in him and thus spurs him on okay please continue he brings great news the raven himself is horse that croaks the fatal entrance of duncan under my, under my battlements come you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts unsex me here and fill me from crown to the toe top full of dire cruelty see these are the most controversial aspects of uh, uh, shakespeare one is frailty thy name is woman that means inconsistency your the name that is from hamlet okay and then she uh, here lady macbeth invokes all the evil spirits uh, in on earth on in this world and that world and she invokes them and she asks them to come and unsex me now what does it mean unsex me here and fill me from top to uh, uh, bottom top full of direst cruelty as a woman you are supposed to be gentle kind okay that is uh, a feature character of your sex a woman is supposed to be gentle kind motherly nurturing but here she says all you spirits up there come and unsex me okay uh, take away all my feminine qualities and turn me into fill me with uh, the direst of cruelty so that i can aid my husband Mm, in this mission, because fate is by our side, fate is on our side. We are going to have King Duncan soon as our guest, and uh, what better opportunity than to assassinate him right here? Duncan comes here tonight. Uh, and when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall sun that morrow see. Look like the innocent flower. but be the serpent under under it voice is heard off stage he is that scum he that's coming must be provided for we will speak further he goes to door stage right duncan is approaching accompanied by banco and ross and by two gate crashers uniform policemen so see now don't forget that you are not actually watching uh, this is not a shakespearean play right okay this is a tom stoppard play so you have gate crashers <laughs> entering and you have uniform policemen who proceed to investigate actors and audience with their flashlights before disappearing into the wings so you can well imagine the scene while all this is going on and while acts of treachery uh, acts of treachery and acts of cruelty are being planned you know as if on cue you have these um, uh, uh, you know instruments of cruelty and instruments of suppression just entering and and also gate crashers entering but along with policemen okay and they have their search lights and they are looking at the uh, the members of the audience and the actors okay. so uh, also that's just think you know it's quite brestian in nature it's breaking the fourth wall okay and as you get extremely you know because you know a macbeth Uh, like all plays shakespeare is extremely emotional uh, in nature so as you get that emotional connect with the play in the middle of stopper comes and breaks you off he says okay let's not forget this is a play all for look at the play within play structure raisa can you read for duncan please See, see, our honoured hostess. Where's the tale of Cordor? Lady Macbeth gives a courtesy. Uh, Macbeth re-entering from Threshill. Your servant, Macbeth, steps forward and bows. Fair noble hostess, we are your guests tonight. Give me your hand. Lady Macbeth leads him out, followed by Ross and Banquo. Macbeth remains. If it were done, when it's done, then it were well. it were done quickly he is here in double trust first as i am his kinsman and his subject strong both against the deed then as his host who should against his murderer 
shut the door, not bear the knife myself. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition which overleaps itself and falls on the other. So, uh, I am going, he has double trust on me. I am also distantly related to King Duncan. He has always been uh, very kind to me. I am one of his favorites. And now, he is also my guest. So, who would blame me? Who would suspect me of killing? Okay? And this is the opportune time for assassinating the king. Um, how now? What news had he asked for me? Lady Macbeth? No, not to us. We will proceed no further in this business. And live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would, like the poor cat is uh, in the adage. But screw your courage to the sticking place, and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, what cannot you and I perform upon the, unguard, uh, the unguarded Duncan? Banquo is approaching. Who is there? Macbeth goes to meet him at window, Lady Macbeth behind. A friend. What, sir? Not yet at rest? The king's a bit. I dreamt last night of the three sisters. To you they have showed some truth. I think not of them. Good repose the while. Thanks, sir. The like to you. Macbeth closes shutters. Now, this is another famous soliloquy from Macbeth. He has a, a kind of, you know, um, a vision of a dagger and he actually sees a dagger on stage. Is this a dagger which I see before me, the handle towards my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not and yet I see thee still. A bell sounds. I go and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. Exit Macbeth. Sounds of ow owls and crickets. Enter Lady Macbeth holding a goblet. Lady Macbeth. That which, that which had made them drunk had made me bold. Uh, the doors are open and the, uh, and the surfeited grooms do mock their charge with snows. I have drugged their posets. I laid their daggers ready. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done. My husband. I have done the deed. Didst, now, uh, uh, didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Now, at this moment, we are told that the deed has been done. She puts something in the wine of the, the guards who are guarding the um, chamber of King Duncan. Now, uh, and they, uh, they drink the wine, okay, which has some sleeping potion mixed in it. And they fall asleep. Okay, they do, just don't know what's happening. She takes uh, um, advantage of the moment. She enters King Duncan's bedchamber. However, she cannot perform the deed. Why? Because she, as she comes back and she tells us that he resembles so much my own father. Otherwise, I would have gladly done so. So, what Shakespeare is saying that perhaps you know everyone is human at heart, basically. All everyone is good. However, it's certain uh, aspect that fatal. Uh, what what do we call it? The fatal flaw in our character that leads to our downfall. That leads to our tragedy. Yes, Akshya. Yes, fatal flaw or hamartia, right? So it's the hamartia that leads uh, to the tragedy in our lives. Okay, Lady Macbeth cannot be all that bad if she could not do perform the deed herself. Okay, she comes back and asks her husband and her husband now he actually wants the deed to get over with. He says okay fine let us do it. And I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry and then look at the uh, inventive outrageousness of Tom Stoppard. A police siren is heard approaching the house. You know you, uh, you look at the coincidence. They hear the Lady Macbeth says she heard the owl scream and the crickets cry, and a police siren is heard approaching the house. During the following dialogue, the car arrives and the car doors are heard to slam. There is one di uh, did laugh in its sleep and one cried murder, one cried God bless us and aim in the other. Siren stops as they had seen me with these hangmen's hands. 
Can you read it, Rehan, for Lady Macbeth? Consider it, uh, consider it not so deeply. These deeds must not be thought after these ways. So it will make us mad. Methought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more, Macbeth does murder sleep, sharp rapping. When is that knocking? Sharp rapping. How is it with me when every noise appalls me? Wake Duncan with thy knocking, sharp trapping, I would thou couldest. They leave, the knocking of stage continues, a door of stage opens and closes, the door into the room opens and the inspector enters an empty room. He seems surprised to find himself where he is. Now see, knocking uh, at the door, at, at the gate is a, a famous scene from Macbeth. And then the, the in the actual play also, yeah, it's it's a much celebrated, oft quoted scene from Macbeth, knocking on the gate, okay, and coincide, yeah, stopped, manipulates the scene, okay. He uses that scene, and it's there is a sharp rapping on the door, uh, where on the you know, where at the LRT or the living room theater, the door of the theater, and now you have the uh, police. He affects a sarcastic politeness. Oh, oh, I am so sorry. Is this the national theatre? Of course, he knows it is not the national theatre, it is a living room theatre, but he is being very sarcastic. So, because uh, you know the by the look of it, it look, seems like a, a play is in progress. A woman, the hostess approaches through the audience. Uh, Raisa, can you read for the, the hostess? No. It is not. Wait a minute, I could have made a mistake. Is it the National Academy of Dramatic Art or as we say down Mexico way nada? Nada is nothing, you see there is a pun again, we, we, we talked about this, Stoppard uh, is a master of punning. So, nada uh, means nothingness, right, nada. The, it's na if you remember, um, do you remember how nada, nada has the word nada, it means nothingness. It is a, a, a very popular expression from the existentialist philosophy also. An acronym for National Academy of Dramatic Art, it comes to uh, NADA as well. It is a play on RADA, you know Royal Academy of, of Dramatic Arts, London. Okay, so, this is a play on that and it, it just reminds me, I am just digressing a bit. If you remember Pink Panther 2, have you seen the movie? Okay. The restaurant they burn twice. <laughs> it's also you remember the name of the restaurant? La Plath da Nada. Okay, and uh, it so happens that uh, um, Inspector Clouseau uh, manages to bring uh, burn it twice, not just once. And the <laughs> title is the the you know the name of the restaurant is very prominently displayed. It always you know the camera focuses on it. La, La Plath da Nada. Okay, then we reduce to nothingness again. <laughs> okay, so it is a play on that. No, I am utterly nonplussed. I must have got my wires crossed somewhere. Perhaps I had some wrong information. He is being very sarcastic. He is wandering around the room, looking at the walls and ceiling. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Remember, now this is an echo from uh, Dog's Hamlet where they would uh, have used their own language, dog's language and testing, testing, one, two, three, to the cell, ceiling. In other words, the room is bugged for sound. Okay. Now, this is another interesting feature. The room, they knew that uh, uh, something is happening here, therefore, they barged in. Okay. And how did they know that there is a play in progress? Because the ceiling is bugged, the, the place is bugged and this was actually happening uh, in uh, the, the countries which came under the iron curtain those days. So, the, uh, the houses and uh, leave alone the you know the drama, drama academies or theatre, but also people's personal houses were being bugged okay. and this is a, a one uh, um, theme which has been often explored by playwrights including Arthur Miller's uh, in his very popular play 
called the archbishop's ceiling okay where the entire play takes place in a hall and the place is called it's a, is a, it formerly belonged to an archbishop it's a place set in czechoslovakia okay where a playwright uh, undergoes the same treatment banning persecution and his plays are stopped from being performed and his manuscript is seized that's the theme of the central theme of the play and throughout the, the the characters who assemble in that particular room they are extremely aware that um, you know they are being recorded there is some hidden camera somewhere and just imagine living under that kind of fear where you can't express yourself freely even in your own house because they know that it, the house is bugged and somebody out there is listening to them okay so uh, the same idea the archbishop ceiling it was it also came around the same time a little before then cahoots macbeth the same idea is it the house of the bohemian light opera okay if not the national academy of dramatic arts then maybe uh, the opera house you live here don't you find it rather inconvenient having a lot of preening exhibitionists projecting their voices around the place and that's just the audience i mean you who wants to be packed out night after now night by a cry, crowd of fashionable bronchitic saying i don't think it's as good as his last one and expecting to use your lavatory at will not to mention putting yourself at the mercy of any tom dick or bertold <laughs> but all brushed <laughs> putting uh, who can't universalize our predicament without playing ducks and drakes with your furniture arrangements i don't know why you put up with it you have got your rights okay this is uh, you know extremely ironical your house is being bugged and then at the same time telling you you got your rights <laughs> you shouldn't let people do this to your house nosing around he picks up a tea cozy to reveal a telephone you have even got a telephone i can see you are not at the bottom of the social heap what do you do ah well it's not the first time i have been wrong is this phone practical to ceiling again 678111 he replaces the receiver yes if you had any pride in your home you wouldn't take standing room only in your sitting room lying down okay um the telephone rings in his hand he lifts it up 678111 clear as a bell who do you want he looks around okay is roger here into the phone roger who roger and out he removes the phone from his ear and frowns at it didn't even say goodbye what are happened to the tradition of old world courtesy in this country he puts the phone down just as macbeth and lady macbeth re-enter the room who are you pig face now uh, if you remember pig face in dog's language what does it mean yeah cretinous pig faced git something like that yeah okay so perhaps and this is again a play on dogs hamlet and then you very soon you will uh, uh, find that there are certain you know overlaps between that play and this one okay we'll continue uh cahoots uh, uh dogs hamlet and cahoots macbeth are they always performed together or separately uh, they should be uh, performed together that's what the author exactly. intended yes yeah. yeah i don't know how people but uh, yeah there is a link there is a link between them however one is set in um london and another is set in um, this east european country czechoslovakia but yeah yes they were okay any questions before we wind up for the day Well, uh, but you know, you remember that it, the play was performed in London. Yeah, 
not in Czechoslovakia. So, um, there is a, thankfully not that kind of censorship going on there. So, it was performed and a, quite a well received play. Uh, maybe after, after uh, the lifting of the iron curtain, okay. could not have been performed while the iron curtain was still on. Yeah. But uh, also consider the immense possibilities of exploring Shakespeare. Okay. So, we all talk about um, the universal nature of Shakespeare, what is it? It is a cliche. It has it has become a cliche, we always begin Shakespeare, why do we like Shakespeare? It is extremely universal, but what elaborate on this and then <laughs> we dry up, we do not know, but then if you look at something like this, we do understand how Shakespeare can be universalized. Yeah. So, it is not just paying lip service, but like actually putting where his money is. Yes. And if you put all those lines together, that is all of Shakespeare. The, yeah, quite true. <laughs> Shakespeare himself comes out and says all the most memorable dialogues, you know, as if it is from a Bollywood pot boiler, all the dialogues are in there. Okay. <laughs> most clapped worthy dialogues of Shakespeare are in there. And uh, in, in this, but uh, yeah, uh, I remember Tom Stoppard saying somewhere that. Uh, this play, uh, as we see it, Cahoots Macbeth, was not performed uh, in exactly this way in by in Czechoslovakia. They would perform Macbeth in the proper manner. Okay. It was just a way of escaping from the regime because they couldn't write what they actually wanted to. You see, but they still wanted to act or stage a play. So Macbeth would be performed as it was meant to be performed not in this truncated form. Now, because it is Cahoots Macbeth, Stoppard is taking, you know, uh, yes, liberties with it. All right, so we will meet tomorrow.